when we look around and we see today in our politics a rich white man telling working class white people that their problem is brown people, we need to understand the historical pedigree of that. That is symbolic of the entire history of race and class politics in America. The history of rich white people telling working class and poor white people that their problem are black and brown people. So beginning in the 1600s, that is what happens. Prior to about 1670 or so, there was no such thing as the white race, at least not recognized as such, called as such. That is not what people of European descent were when they were in Europe. They were English, they were Irish, they were Scottish, they were whatever they were. They were not white. Only in the colonies do we become white, and for a very specific reason, because in those early years of the colonial period, where you had white indentured servants, one level above enslaved themselves, and you had African descended folks, some of them enslaved for life, others indentured servants also in the earliest years of the colonies, those people would often see their interests as being common. They all realized that they were being screwed over by the same landowners, the same elite. They fomented various rebellions like Bacon's Rebellion in Virginia, others as well. And as a result, the elite in the colonies realized that they had to figure out a way to get the f other folks from Europe on their team. So they created this mentality that said, you're now a member of the white race. You're on our team. You're, you're wearing our uniform. Now you're at the end of the bench. You may not get in the game, but you're on our team, you see. So then they start putting white folks now called on the slave patrols, right? Didn't really give them any land or any real power except the power to control people of color, which is why folks of color say, and they are right, that modern policing traces to the system of slave patrols and slavery. And we have to be clear on that because that's the history, right? So whiteness was created to divide and conquer, to create the notion that even though you might not have much, at least you're not black, at least you're not indigenous, at least you're not Mexican, at least you're not Chinese working on the railroads to build the transcontinental economy. You may not have much, but at least you have, as W.E.B. Du Bois said, the psychological wage of whiteness. And it's a trick that was played during the Civil War era on my people in the South, right? Rich folk, landowners in the South telling poor white folks who didn't own anything that they got to go out and fight to preserve the rich man's property in human beings. Fascinating. Why would you do that? Why would I go fight for your property? Well, because you told me that if I don't, these slaves are going to take my job. No fool, they got your job. That's the point. If you got to charge a dollar a day and you can make them work for free because you own them, guess who got the gig, Jack? Not you. So in fact, the system of enslavement was in the long run against the class interest of working class white folks, but they got suckered. Same thing happened in the union movement. You had white labor union folks who didn't want black and brown bodies in their union because it would reduce the professionalism of the craft. No fool, it'll double the size of your union. And then when you go out on strike, then when you go out on strike, they can't replace your happy ass with the brown folk that you didn't want next to you in the first place. Because when they do replace you with them, then you will blame them, not the elite. See how that works? It's a trick. And it has worked for hundreds of years. It is working on some folk right now. And it is our job to resist that with every fiber of our being.